So, I recently started exploring the world of artificial intelligence art with Midjourney. It's an online tool that can bring to life anything you can imagine, no matter how surreal or abstract it might be. If you're new to AI art, Midjourney is probably your best bet for creating visual art. You just input a series of commands, and the AI does its best to visualize your written instructions. It can generate a wide range of art styles, from painterly effects to hyper-realistic renders. Midjourney operates as a bot on the Discord chat platform, so first off, you need to set up an account there and then join the Midjourney server through the Midjourney website. That's where you can see all kinds of weird and wonderful creations from the Midjourney community. To make your own piece in one of the newbie groups, you add your input to the ongoing stream of activity by typing in a forward slash, followed by a brief description of your idea, like, say, cute raccoon in a baseball cap. The Midjourney bot gets to work creating your images, but you'll soon find that this public group is way too noisy. You'll quickly get lost in a sea of hundreds of requests and outcomes. If you scroll up again, you can peek at your own entry, which will be highlighted in yellow, but it still disappears in a few seconds. Instead, click on the little inbox icon in the top right corner, and there you'll find the option to go straight to your most recent result. Now you can admire your randomly generated images of cute raccoon in a baseball cap, all laid out in a grid of four squares. Each result is unique, so some might be just as you imagine. Others, though, might not be what you were aiming for at all. This little guy turned out pretty cute. For any serious use, you'll need to sign up for a paid plan. They used to give 25 free requests before. A major perk of the paid plan is the ability to chat with the bot one-on-one, -on -one, so you don't have to try tracking down your creations in those fast-moving public groups. Just type a forward slash, then subscribe in the message box and follow the link to the sign-up page. Once you're a premium subscriber, find the Midjourney bot in any group, right-click on it, and select Message. Then you can interact directly with the bot in your Discord direct message inbox. You can see that I recently figured out what our family car would look like as a rally car. The possibilities are endless. Now, when you enter your command, it won't get lost among the creations of others. Furthermore, you can also create your own server in Discord and invite the Midjourney bot to it. This can help keep your projects organized. Name your server, then return to the main Midjourney server to find the bot again. This time, click on it with the left mouse button and select Add to Server. Now you can enter your own server on the left and interact with the Midjourney bot as usual. Once you get your results, you have several options. You can do a re-roll to generate a completely new set of images. As with hand drawing, each result will be unique. It can be very similar with minor variations, or it could be a completely different interpretation. Sometimes AI needs a few tries, re-rolls, to figure everything out. If you don't get what you were looking for the first time, try a re-roll to see what it produces the second or third time before trying different commands. Other buttons relate to the four squares of the grid. One, two, three, and four. The top row is for upscale to recreate a version of that exact result, while the bottom row is for creating new variations of that picture in a similar style but with minor differences. For example, here are four variations of this cute raccoon in a baseball cap. All of them look similar, but AI decided to make changes to random elements. It's impossible to specify exactly what you want to change, so it's important to remember that it's better to let AI realize the vague concepts you have in mind rather than trying to make it create something very specific. Once you've upscaled the image, it's already reproduced in higher resolution. From here, you can either open it in a browser and save, or try to upscale it even more using options like Light, Upscale, Redo, or Beta. It's worth trying both options and comparing the results. One will be clearer, more detailed, and higher resolution than the other, but be wary of strange glitches. Undoubtedly, different upscaling algorithms will be added soon, so hopefully, one day we will have the ability to export even larger images. 
Now you have created your first AI artwork. The next step is to start exploring some settings and experimenting with different commands. Here are a few key ones. ER16.9. This command sets the aspect ratio of images. In my case, it's 16.9. You can write any ratio you like. The next command is describe. The describe command allows you to upload an image and generate four possible prompts based on that image. Use the describe command to explore new vocabulary and aesthetic movements. Describe generates prompts that are inspirational and suggestive. It cannot be used to recreate an uploaded image exactly. I plan to create more videos about mid-journey in the near future, so if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll stay with me to learn all the tips, tricks, and techniques of mid-journey that I've learned.